What's going on everybody? My name's Avid and today we are going to talk about using command blocks in your adventure maps to make a really unique adventure experience. Now the city that you see behind me is called Cloud's Rest and this dungeon is in my adventure map series that I've been working on and I use a ton of command blocks to make a really exciting experience for my players. And when I say I use a ton of command blocks in this dungeon, I mean I use a ton of command blocks. And I know what you're probably saying, Avid, this is way too confusing. Look at how many pieces of redstone and command blocks there are. Don't worry. We're going to go through each and every command block in agonizing detail until you understand. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> That would be that would be horrible. Um, I'm going to talk through some of the basics of these command blocks and you will eventually be able to put together the basics to create something just like this in your adventure map server. I got to patch up this hole and then we're going to get right to this tutorial. We are actually going to walk through the introduction of the Clouds Rest boss fight and afterwards I'm going to break down each of the commands that were used to make this boss fight possible. Now you're going to see a lot of things happening so I'm going to do my best to describe what you see but then we're going to take a step back and break it all down so you guys can replicate this on your servers. So the first thing that happens is users are teleported from another area onto this pressure plate. And when they step on the pressure plate, they get a noise on the screen, they see a couple messages from the antagonist and the protagonist, as well as they're given uh, these pieces of armor in order to survive the fight. Now, users are going to walk up the staircase and there's a command block that's at the top of the stairs and this command block looks for the user to enter a certain area. Once the user enters the area, the boss fight begins. Now, a lot of things are happening here too. We have a message shown up on the screen. We have lightning bolts. We have the weather changing. We have a couple of status effects, like I can jump a lot higher and I can run a lot faster. And this is where we're going to stop the example. And the reason is because a lot of things have already happened and I wanna break them down for you right now. So before we get into replicating that awesome boss fight, I wanna talk a little bit about how to obtain command blocks and then the three different types of command blocks that you see behind me. So if you're on a survival multiplayer server, you want to make sure that you have commands enabled and that you have access to the give command. On a single player world, if you don't have cheats enabled, you can always open to LAN, click allow cheats, and then start your LAN world. Now in order to give yourself a command block, you're going to type the slash give command. Then you're going to either type at s or you can type your name, in this case avid. And then you are going to type in command block, Minecraft command block specifically, just like this. Now, if you hit enter, you get the first command block that we see on the left-hand side here, which is called the impulse command block. Now, the impulse command block is used in scenarios where you want to run a command one time, especially with redstone. So I use this command, for instance, when you step on that pressure plate, I'm able to give the player a piece of armor. Impulse commands are great and are used about 80% of the time for me um, because typically you want to do something one time, like give a player an item or summon a lightning bolt or what have you. Now, the next command block we have here is a chain command block. And chain command blocks are kind of like impulse command blocks, but they can be used to run multiple commands because command blocks can only run one command. And that's really important. So if you want to say, for instance, give a player a piece of gear, like a helmet, pants, uh, and a chest plate, you need to use chain command blocks in order to chain a bunch of commands together. Now, the very last command block here is a repeating command block. And repeating command blocks are insanely powerful. I use them all the time, like when I was detecting if a player entered the certain spot on the stairs. However, repeating command blocks can be power hungry because they run a command every single game tick. So you just need to be really careful with when using repeating command blocks because they can start to slow down your, your single player and your multiplayer worlds. So the first command block we're going to cover is the impulse command block. This command block is used when the player steps on a pressure plate uh, at the very beginning of that boss fight and they are given uh, a couple of items. Now, we use an impulse command block with a couple of chain command blocks in that example, and we'll get to that. But for the sake of this example, let's just give the player one item using this command block. So all you have to do is attach a little bit of redstone to an impulse command block and have some way to activate that redstone. Then on the command block side, you just need to type the slash give command. You have the name of the player that uh, you're going to be giving an item to, and then you can list out any Minecraft item that you want to give to the player. So in this case, we're gonna give the player a diamond helmet. 
Now, a couple of other things uh, that are really important to note here is I'm on Java edition. I know Bedrock edition is going to look a little bit different, but command blocks work the same way in Bedrock and the way that you configure them is exactly the same too. So don't be worried if your interface looks a little bit different. Now, a couple other things to, uh, that are important to note is you wanna make sure you're set to impulse for this example, you're set to unconditional, and we'll get to what that is in a moment. And then you need to say needs redstone, which means redstone is going to activate this command when the redstone signal goes high. So when I step on this pressure plate, I should get a diamond helmet. And there it is. The next command block that we're going to cover is the chain command block, which is this green one here. Now chain command blocks, like I said, can be used to run multiple commands that chain into each other. So in the scenario where I stepped on that pressure plate in the boss battle and I was given a helmet and I was given all of this gear and there were messages that were thrown, First, we used an impulse command block to start the whole chain off, and then we use a chain command block to run the rest of the commands. So in this scenario, we have the impulse command block doing exactly the same thing. We're giving the player a diamond helmet. And in the chain command block, let's tell the player something like, you have come to meet your doom. <laughs> uh, very friendly. And this is the first time we're seeing the tell raw command. And if you guys are interested in more of how to make the tell raw command uh, have different colors and different effects, please let me know down in the comments because I'd love to show you. So now that we've chained these two commands together, it's really important just to note the direction of the arrows. This means that the lower command block is chaining into the upper command block. If the lower command block was pointed in a different direction, the upper command block would not run. So when I step on this pressure plate, I should be given a diamond helmet and you see you have come to meet your doom as a message. Now here's another really interesting thing because I'm sure you're asking, how are these configured? So the chain command block is obviously configured as a chain. It's currently unconditional and it's always active. What that means is you don't need redstone in order for this command block to run. It's just going to run if a command that is chained into it activates a command. But what happens if I set it to conditional? What does that mean? Well, conditional, quite frankly, I don't use these command blocks very often, but the way that they work is if the prior command was successful, meaning if the user was granted a helmet, you will still run the command block above it. So in this case, it's always gonna run because I'm going to be given a helmet. However, I'm in creative mode, so let's try to do something a little different. Like, let's try to give a player who, all players on the server who are in the game mode of survival, a helmet. So I am not in the survival mode, so this command will probably fail, and that means I will not see a message from this, this chain command block. So here we go. And you notice nothing happens, right? I'm not given a helmet, and we don't see a message from this chain command block because it is conditional. Now, just to really let it sink in, if I use unconditional, I won't be given a helmet, but I'm still gonna see the message. That's because when it's unconditional, this chain command block doesn't care if the prior command completed successfully. So the last command block to showcase is the repeating command block. And this is probably one of my favorites because commands that you put into this repeater, they will run every single game tick. And you can do things like detect when a player has entered a certain area. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So if we want to detect if a player is in a certain area, we're going to use the execute if entity command. And we are going to check if a player is within some distance. So in this case, three blocks. This is the full command. Now, a couple other things to note is make sure your command block type is repeat, unconditional, and that it needs redstone. The reason I usually have my repeat command blocks require redstone is because I want to be able to turn them off because if you have a lot of repeat command blocks running, they can slow your game down. So you'll notice here that nothing is happening. Our comparator, which is going to accept if the player is within the three block radius, uh, is not on unless we power the block. So now if I get within three blocks, the comparator turns on. And if I step away, the comparator turns off. Now there is this really interesting, I would call it a bug with repeat command blocks, where if they have a high output signal and you remove the redstone, it stays high. And this causes so many problems in my builds, and I'm sure it'll cause problems for you guys, but I'm happy to make a video on how to actually fix this issue. If you guys have this issue, please let me know down in the comments below because it's a pain in the butt. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to take this output from this repeating command block, and we're going to use it to summon a lightning bolt. So in this case, we are going to use the summon command. We're gonna type a lightning bolt, and we're gonna summon a lightning bolt right on top of this command block with the tilde command, just like this. 
So if I get within three blocks of this, lightning bolt. And again, we'll do one more time, lightning bolt. All right, excellent. So let's put everything together now. Let's add a couple extra commands here. Like uh, we will add one more command here that gives the player jump boost, just like we had in the boss battle. So that is the effect command. We're going to give it to, in this case, the nearest player, and we are going to select the effect jump boost. So putting everything together, all three command blocks here, you can start to see just how powerful they are because lightning bolt, and now I have jump boost on my character. So it goes without saying that there are a near infinite number of ways you can combine command blocks to do amazing things in your adventure maps. I'm a software engineer and I absolutely love how command blocks work in Minecraft from a software perspective. So I'm excited to take these really complex ideas and allow you guys to build amazing things in your adventure maps too. Well, that's going to do it for today, everybody. Thank you so much for stopping by. If you like this video, I would really appreciate if you left a like. Uh, and if you want to see more of this content in the future, please hit that subscribe button down below. It helps me out a whole lot. I'm thinking of doing an in-depth tutorial on each of the commands and how I use them in this adventure map so that you guys can use them in your adventure maps too. Let me know if you like that idea. Uh, but anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.